Judges chapter 2. And an angel of the Lord came up from Gilgal to Bacham and said, I made you to go out of Egypt. That's God. And have brought you unto the land which I swear unto your father. That's God. And I swear unto your fathers. And I said, I will never break my covenant. That's God. Here's a rebuke from chapter 1. And ye shall make no league with the inhabitants of the land. Ye shall throw down their altars. Remember chapter 1, we read all the places and they couldn't get rid of them, so we taxed them and gave them money. And they dwelt among them. God's reviewing what he told them. Ye shall throw down their altars. That's mean and nasty, isn't it? According to American standards. But ye have not obeyed my voice. Chapter 1. Why have you done this? Why have you not obeyed my voice? Deuteronomy 7.12. Just one of the many places. Deuteronomy 7.12. Says, Wherefore it shall come to pass, if ye hearken to these judgments and keep and do them, that the Lord thy God shall keep unto thee the covenant and the mercy which swear unto thy fathers. He will love thee and will bless thee and multiply thee. You, that's not going to happen. There's a rebuke. There is. They're not doing what they're supposed to be or are supposed to have done. Wherefore I also said, I will not drive them out from before you, but they shall be as thorns in your sides, and their God shall be a snare unto you. Let's go back to Joshua 23, 13. Not going to go back far. Joshua 23, 13. Joshua 23, 13. No for a certainly, that's the first time certainly shows up, that the Lord your God will no more drive out of drive out any of these nations from before you, but they shall be snares and traps unto you, and scourges in your sides, and a thorn in your eyes, until you perish from off the good land which the Lord your God has given you. And it hasn't been long. It hasn't been long at all. The thorns were a result of the curse put upon mankind for sinning against the word of God. Genesis 3.18 And thus God drove out Adam and Eve. Now God's a merciful God because we're going to go through Ruth, 1 Kings, 2 Kings, 1 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles till he casts out Judah. But in between this time, Gad, Reuben, the half tribe of Manasseh, they're going to go first. Israel's going to go second, and then Judah. And it came to pass, verse 4. I mean, can you imagine something? Remember, we read a couple chapters ago, it said, God will do you hurt. Thorns in your sides. Have you ever walked into a thorn bush or walked on a path in a camp ground somewhere and, and just thorns popped out? You ever get a thorn in your foot or your finger? That's what God says, I'll, I'll give you thorns. Paul said he had a thorn in the flesh. And he prayed to God three times for it. That's not good. Every once in a while our dogs will come in from outside and they get this little thing that we have down here in the grass. And they start limping and they're going to limp until you, you get that thing out of their paw. They shall be as thorns in your sides, and their God shall be a snare, a trap unto you. And it came to pass when the angel of the Lord spake these words. See, it was the angel of the Lord. Chapter 1, they weren't sure who it was. But when it says, me, I did it, I did it, I'm the one that did this, I'm the one that's going to do Uh-oh. That's not just an angel. The, re the author of chapter of this book, he says, it's the angel. 
these words unto all the children of Israel, that the people lifted up their voice and wept. Wow, they, they, they're crying. And they called the name of the place Buckham, which means weepers. So they really got touched to the heart. And they sanctified or sacrificed there unto the Lord. They got right. That's good. Chapter 1, they did wrong. Chapter 2, there is a cleaning. And when Joshua, Joshua is still alive, had let the people go after this event, the children of Israel went every man unto his. So when we get the close over here of chapter 24, verse 20 in Joshua, If you forsake the Lord and serve strange God, he will do you, he will turn and do you hurt. This is going on in Judges chapter 2. But they never did put away those idols. And he said to the children of Israel, every man unto his inheritance and possess the land. So would that be then, here comes that great altar. Built by Reuben, Gad, and Hatchai and Manasseh. And the people served the Lord all the days of Joshua. And all the days of the elders that outlived Joshua. Who had seen all the great works of the Lord that he did for Israel. All those who are now in the wilderness journeys, they're dying out. Joshua the son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died being 110 years old. And they buried him in the border of their inheritance of Timnah. In the mountain of Ephraim on the north side of the hill Gaish. And also, all the generation were gathered unto their fathers, and there arose another generation after them, which knew not the Lord, nor yet the works which he had done for Israel. Here's a generation that was not taught by the previous generation. The generation that dies out did not train the generation coming up. And I'm, that's what's going on in the churches today. The generation that are in the churches today, the Laodicene church age, are teaching the future church age generation wrong and worldliness. And thus the book of Judges is going to play out in the, in the church age. And it's already played out. And we're only in chapter 2. Listen. Be not deceived. God's not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth that he shall also reap. And you can be dead and reap. When we die as the Lord tarries, I am afraid of what the church age will be tomorrow. And then when the generation today is being illegally and wrongfully taught of God today in the churches, I fear that when their children are taken over until the Lord comes. Look at today's church. Look what's going on. Look at the Bible says we're great. We're wonderful. Look how great we are. We got great building plans. We got great stuff going on. And God says, you make me sick. And look what they're teaching them. They're not teaching the Bible. Very rarely is, is, is in the Sunday school classes the Bible open. And when they are taught, they're taught silly and stupid things and wrong things. And also all the generation was gathered their fathers and there arose another generation after them, which knew not the Lord. I mean, you could, you, they couldn't teach the Lord, nor yet the works which he had done. In, there was no history being taught. That's America. America has erased and changed her history. That's what's going on in Judges chapter 2. They did not teach about Exodus. They did not teach the wilderness. And they didn't teach about God. That's the public school system today. Judges 2.10 And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. Did evil in the sight of the Lord appears 13 times in your Bible. 
And many of those times it shows up, and this king, he was such and such age when he began to reign, and he reigned X amount of years, and he did evil in the sight of the Lord, and that is spoken all of the kings of Israel. Not one king of Israel north ever did right. Now there were kings of Judah that did right. Thirteen times did evil in the sight of the Lord. This Bible is written beyond any man. Thirteen in the Bible is the number of rebellion. Why didn't you come up twelve or fourteen? Your thirteen is a rebellion. And serve Baal. Now you see B A A L, that's Baal. You say, what's Baal? That's an S. That's Baal's. If you were going to write a, a plural form of Baal, that's how you would write it in the Old Testament. I am. It's Baal's. Not just one Baal, but plenty of Baal's. And we're going to come across the Queen of Heaven. And the Queen of Heaven and Baal would have babies. And they would call them the host of heaven, the stars. You'll find that in Roman and Greek mythology. You'll find that throughout Babylonian. The gods mating together and making little gods. And big gods, fat gods, evil gods, wicked gods. And they forsook the Lord God of their fathers. That's Jehovah. That's where the church is going, if it has not already. Which brought them out of the land of Egypt. So there's one God to the Jews. That one God that they were brought out by Egypt and they forgot him. And followed other GODS. Remember, God said that makes them jealous. That makes them mad. You're not to do that. The Bible acknowledges that there are G-O-D-S's out there. As much as G-O-D. Of the gods, G-O-D-S, of the people that were round about them. Those are the people they were supposed to utterly destroy. Now they got their gods. Now they got their worship. That's why God said get rid of them. That's why God says get rid of their religion. No, they adopted their religion. And provoked the Lord to anger. And when you bring into your church the gods, G-O-D-S, of the heathen around you, that provokes the Lord to anger. And I'm not even going to get into the churches because that's already there. That was the church, I believe it's Pergamos, much marriage. That's when a Catholic church came into the church of, of God. I don't mean the church of God. I mean the bride of Jesus Christ. All right, 13. And they forsook the Lord and served Baal. So they got Baal and they got Balaam. They got Baal and they got Baals. And Ashtoreth. Now, Joshua 9.10. Joshua 9.10. We're going to look at something here about first time shows up. Joshua 9.10. And they're dividing the land. Oh no, this is a testimony, excuse me. It says, And all that he did to the two kings of the Amorites were beyond Jordan. To Sihon the king of Heshman, and to Og king of Bashan, which was at Astra. That's a city. That's the first time that shows up. It's a city. Now, when we come over here to Judges, this Astra is not a city, it's a goddess. And this is the first time that goddess shows up, and she shows up with her husband. And a couple verses before are their children. Isn't that interesting? The marriage of God's G-O-D-S, the marriage of G-O-D-D-E-S-S, -S, and their, their children. Ashtoreth is plural of Ashtoreth. 1 Kings 11.5. We got to look at this woman. We got to stop and we got to study this, this woman, this goddess. 1 Kings 11.5. I'm not in a hurry. We can do part two if it necessarily. We gotta get this because we're first Kings chapter eleven verse five. Someone's gonna say that there was a church started by Constantine in AD. And we're gonna prove that wrong today. 
First Kings 11, 5. And we'll start in verse 1. But King Solomon loved many strange women. I don't mean she had, they had antennas and all that. That means, he, uh, that means Gentile women. To get it with the daughter of Pharaoh. Oh, boy. The woman of Moabites, the Amorites, Edomites, Zionians, and Hittites. I thought the Hittites were supposed to be gone. Of the nations serving which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, you shall not go into them. Neither shall they come unto you. Marriage. For surely they will turn away your heart after their G-O-D-S. Judges says 1425 B.C. And I don't, I don't know better dates than I know of. The, the date here for Solomon is 992 B.C. We're going from 1425 to 993. And here's those G.O.D.S.'s. Solomon claimed unto these in love. Eros, Cupid. And he had 700 wives. That's a ridiculous number. Princes, 300 concubines. And his wives turned away his heart. He married them. And it came to pass when Solomon was old that his wives turned away his heart after other GLDS. And his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God, as was the heart of David his father. Solomon went after Ashtoreth, there she is, the goddess of the Zidonians. And after Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites. And Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord and went not fully after the Lord as David his father. Solomon built a, built a high place for Chemish, that's a god, the abomination of Moab. In the hill that is before Jerusalem for Molech, that's the one you kill your babies. The abomination of the children of it. And blah, 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 blah. Sacrifice on their gods. Blah, 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 blah. But there's Asterisk. That's an interesting woman. Phoenician goddess. Aster of the Greeks. Which were worshipped as idols during times of spiritual decline of Israel. We're not going to... Now, let's look at this one. Let's look at the Roman Catholic Church, shall we? With asterisks. Now, let me tell you before we go or turn to Jeremiah 44, 18. She has another name. Actually, she has many names. One of her names, I don't know if you would recognize Jeremiah 44, 18. Is she goes by the name of Estar. Or you know it as the Roman Easter. Easter Esther is this goddess, Astra, but Easter Esther is just another nation. I forgot when we read 1 Kings 11 who she was of. I think it was Ammonites. You can go back saying Zidonians. See, all these gods are different names in different areas. But they usually say save the say perfect. Baal is he's the god of all gods. He's Apollo. The son of the god of the sun. Asterisk is the goddess of the moon. So when you get the sun and moon coming together, you get little stars, Baalums. But let's see a church that was not founded in AD, but found in BC under Jeremiah 44, verse 18, because here she is again. 587 B.C. is the date of this. And let's see. 17. 16. 15. I'm starting verse 15. Jeremiah 44, 15. Then all the men which knew their wives had burned incense unto other G.O.D.S., and all the women stood by in great multitude, even all the people that dwelt in the land of Egypt. That's Solomon. He had an Egyptian wife. Pathos answered Jeremiah saying, okay, here they're going to answer the prophet of the Lord. Ready? As for the word that thou hast spoken unto us in the name of the Lord, Jehovah. How's that? 
Jeremiah, you speak in the words of God the Father, the one that took us out of Egypt. They acknowledge that. We will not hearken on today. Do you know a religion that will not hearken on to the words of God in the Bible? I do. We'll read further. But we will certainly do whatsoever thing that goeth forth out of our own mouth. Tradition. All right, here she comes. To burn incense unto the queen of heaven. And to pour out drink offerings unto her. As we have done, we and our fathers and our kings and our princes in the cities of Judah. This Judah has been worshiping this, this woman, queen of heaven, that has a drink offering. And you burn incense unto her in the streets of Jerusalem. Now, where I grew up in New London, Connecticut, there would be a woman statue being carried down the streets as you would take money to the statue. The star of the sea, the church was called. And the saint name given to that church that I grew up in, in New London, Connecticut, that they cannot say, oh, this does not happen, is St. Mary's. The Queen of Heaven to them. In Jeremiah 587 BC and shows up in Judges as Esther, as Easter, as Ishtar, with her husband Baal, having little Baalums. So far as that the Mormon church will say that Jesus and, and Lucifer are brothers. Well, they have to have a mother then. And then had plenty of victuals, had plenty of food, and were well by serving Mary, or I mean the Queen of Heaven, and saw no evil. But since we left off to burn incense on the Queen of Heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto her, we have want of all things and have been consumed by the sword and by faith. So you see, the fact is, the reason why we're being sacked by the Babylonians is because the Queen of Mary, the Queen of Heaven, is upset with us. Ishtar is not happy. We don't care about Jehovah. We care about the Queen of Heaven. And when we burnt incense unto the Queen of Heaven and poured out drink offerings unto her, did we make her cakes to worship her? And if I remember correctly from the Catholic Church of St. Mary Church, they would burn the incense and then they would offer a drink offering and they would offer you a cake. And it's all to Mary. Jeremiah chapter 44, verses 15 through 19, B.C. 587. And this has been going on since Judges chapter 2. Don't tell me that Mass is for Jesus Christ because he's in a box. And one of the prayers at the Mass would be, you know, Mary full of grapes or whatever you want to say. And usually when you came out of confession booth, they would tell you, say, five Hail Marys and I forget, hey, thank God I forget what the rest of them were. Hail Mary. You go to Mary, the Queen of Heaven, because she's in charge. She even ruled God, male. That's what's going on in Judges chapter 2 to Estrus. She's the Queen of Heaven. And you look up Lorelei, and you can find all the goddesses. Verse 14. Now, what about the Queen of Heaven and her cakes and her burnt offering? The anger of the Lord was hot against Israel. How's that? Mary worship makes God angry, no matter what her name is. And he delivered them into the hands of spoilers that spoiled them. They went and robbed them. And he sold them into the hands of their enemies round about. God said, hey, what do you guys want to give me for those Jews? He sold them. That's where serving other gods, and it's in the churches today. 
I have been in churches where Baal is the pastor. I have been in churches where the pastor's wife is Astrid. And you don't dare go against them too. And then Lord forbid their, their Balaams, their children, their grandchildren, they're just such lovely vessels of great honor. I got one church in particular mine. And the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel, and he delivered them in the hands of spoilers that spoiled them. He sold them under the hands of their enemies round about, so that he could not any longer stand before their enemies. They're losers. They're conquered. They're defeated. Because Baal, Balaam, Ashereth cannot take care of you. A guy right me today, he said, you know, I don't understand these wars, these problems, and these tribulations. I said, it's because it's sin of man. God doesn't allow it to the fact is, God gives us a free will. You can choose what you want. You want, you want to choose God or you want to choose God's G-O-D-S. And if you choose God's G-O-D-S, he'll punish you. Oh, but they look like they're doing so well. You wait till when they stand before judgment, before God, if they don't get right. Whensoever they went out, the hand of the Lord was against them for evil. That's not good. There is no winning when God's against you. And as the Lord has said, and as the Lord has sworn unto them, and they were all greatly distressed. <laughs> What's wrong with the gods? There's no joy. Now here is the reason, the mode, 16 to 19, the book that we're reading now, Judges. Here is the mercy of God, the book of Judges. And we're going to see the failure of man, the book of Judges. How great God is, book of Judges. And how much sinners we are, the book of Judges. Nevertheless, the Lord raised up Judges. Judge not these should be judged. Which deliver them out of the hand of those that spoil them. People will come up to us when we're preaching the gospel. Judge not least you be judged. I'm trying to help you. And you pop up like the people in Judges say, oh, we don't want to hear it. Like they said to Jeremiah, oh, we know you speak of God. And how many people say you speak right? You're speaking from the Bible, but we don't want to hear it. It happens in 2018, 2017, 2016, going all the way back to 2009, 2008, when I began the public ministry. We know you're right, but we don't want to hear you. Which deliver them out of the hand of those that spoil them. Those are the judges. And yet, they would not hearken unto the judges. But they went a whoring, that's a nice word, after other gods. They're selling themselves for the gods. And bow themselves unto them. That's not worship, what is? You want to go over to a Middle East countries and watch them bow down on their mat towards Mecca? You want to see climb mountains and go up to the guru on a mountain and bow down before him? You want to do karate and everything like that and bow down before the guy standing in front of you? You want to have the Christmas tree and bow down and get the gifts? And they turn quickly, quickly out of the way, which their fathers walked in. And obeying the commandment of the Lord, but they did not, they didn't follow what their fathers did. And one of the big problems was because their fathers didn't teach them. Verse 10. You know why there's no respect amongst kids today? Because their parents did not teach them respect. It ain't guns, it ain't the video games, it's the parents' fault. And it's only going to get worse because we've got generations today of parents that don't do nothing, don't care, and have nothing to do with their children. Wait a minute. Judges 10. And also generation that was gathered in this generation, there arose another generation after them, which knew not the Lord nor the works. That's today's parents with the, with the children of the future generation. Imagine the illness of parents in a church. That don't have anything with their children to do anything. 
They don't make sure that their children got... Listen, I got kicked out from being a Sunday school teacher because I was signing my children memory verses and I was making sure their parents would sign a piece of paper that they received. The fact is, I am giving this memory verse. Pastor called me an officer. No, you can't do that no more. The parents don't like it. I ain't going to tell you where those parents and those children are today, but they're not in church no more. And when the Lord raised up judges, that the Lord was with the judge. You mean men that go out and tell the people what, what God expects from them? God is with them. The judges. He's not with the people that are, are supposed to be listening. And deliver them out of the hand of the enemies all the days of the judge. For he repented the Lord because of their groanings by reason of them that oppressed them and vexed them. God would send the enemy and come in, and like Egypt, they groan and complain, and oh God, we're in trouble. And God looked at them, oh, I'm sorry I'm doing that to you. Let me send you a judge. Let me send you a preacher. And by the time we get to Jeremiah, oh, we know you preach the word of God, but just shut up, will you? We're going to go back and serve the Queen of Heaven. She's so much better. At least judges, they recognize God is, he's the one doing what he's doing. In Jeremiah, they say, well, you know why we got all these problems? Because we haven't been serving the queen of heaven. A thousand years later, in Jeremiah's time. And it came to pass when the judge was dead. That they returned and corrupted themselves more than their fathers. It got worse after the judge died. If the Lord tarries. And I die before the Lord raptures me out. The ministry that God has given me, according to the Bible, they're going to get worse and worse. And following other gods to serve them. Other gods. Not just G-O-D-S's, but other G-O-D-S's. Making more of plurals of gods. They're going to add more to their gods. Than the gods that they already had. Do you know one man that we read about that tonight? Solomon. You know some of the kings we're going to read about. Lord, what if we get through it? And by the time we get to Ezra. Do you realize when we go through Chronicles and Kings, we're going to read about kings that are going to walk in that temple and they're going to put an altar of their own in that temple. Do you realize the kings are going to walk up to that temple and they're going to nail those doors shut while they put altars to the hosts of heaven where God's name was supposed to be? By the time we get to the end of Chronicles, the Bible speaks of Jeremiah says that there are altars all over the streets of Jerusalem. There are altars all over the streets of Daytona Beach. You can't drive down any street in Daytona Beach without finding some kind of church. We are in the days of the fallen Judea crisis of the Old Testament. There are more gods in America than I don't know what there is. You want to know how many gods there are in India? I think someone told me one time, as far as the gods in India, you can't even count them all. In China and in Japan, they worship their relatives, their ancestors as gods. Russia, they represent the governments of gods. To serve them, take care of them, help them, clean them, keep them well. To bow down unto them, worship, and cease not from their own doings, nor from their stubborn way. They're going to be stubborn about it, like they were in Jeremiah's time, like they are today. A Jew will make any excuse about Jesus Christ today, to their damnation. And the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel. When I read those words of, of, of Joshua, he'll do you hurt. And he said, because that this people have transgressed my covenant, which I commanded their fathers, and have not hearkened unto my voice like Adam did, 
What did God tell Adam? Do not eat of that fruit. What did he do? He did not obey the voice of God. And look at all the troubles and tributes and problems we have today. You got to take aspirin. You got to take ibuprofen. That's because Adam disobeyed God. Have you ever visited a funeral of a loved one? That is because Adam disobeyed God. These children, the children of Israel, are going to disobey God and they're going to get hurt. Joshua said, God will do you hurt. And they're going to be stubborn about it. I, God, also will not henceforth drive out any from before them of the nations which Joshua left when he died. So why does David still fight the Philistines? Why does King Saul fight the Philistines? Because you guys are stubborn, you wouldn't listen to me, and you had fallen gods to worship. There you go. God leaves them. Joshua told them before he died, go in there and wipe them out completely. And Judges chapter 1, verse 1, looks like they're going to do that. But then they leave and abandon God. That through them, the enemies, I may prove Israel. Ooh, whether they will keep the way of the Lord to walk therein. What are they doing in Jeremiah's time? They're not walking in the Lord. You know how many converts Jeremiah gets in his ministry? Maybe one. And I forget what his name is. Um, maybe. Any, the scribe. I, wouldn't even, I don't even know if, if he was... The entire land of Judah did not get right by the preaching of, of Jeremiah. And we are in that state in this country that today as it was in Judah. And yet churches are preaching. We're having great revivals. That is Ahaz 450 prophets saying, go Ahab, here's the horns, you're going to win. And one preacher gets up of God and says, no, you're not. Put him in jail. Shut him up. I don't like him. Okay, let's now change our clothes. Let's have a script. Let's do a performance. And then you die. Hey, uh, kings of Israel, messed up. You got the way of the Lord to walk therein, as their fathers did, keep it or not. Are you going to do it or you're not going to do it? The book of Judges is going to show us what is the heart of Israel. Okay? What is the heart of Israel? Judges 21, 25. Now we're in chapter 2, but let's go to the end of Judges. Let's find the last verse in Judges and see how we're doing. Judges 21, 25. In those days, there was no king in Israel. Every man did that which was right in his own eyes. Situation ethics. 21-25. Proverbs says to the fact, and I can't quote it completely, the ways of a man are right in his own eyes, but the ways thereof are end up in death. The, right, the ways of man in his own eyes are right, but God will weigh out. Judges ends up in a failure. God says in chapter 2, I'm going to try them. I'm going to see how they're doing. Failure. Failure, failure. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. So 23, to close this chapter, therefore the Lord left those nations, which they were supposed to wipe out, without driving that's the first time driving shows up. And that doesn't have to do with in a car. It has to do with your enemies. Driving them out hastily. Neither delivered he them into the hand of Joshua. So it already began before Joshua died. That little side note. And after Joshua dies, it got worse. You can almost classify Joshua as maybe as a judge. 
because he sent Joshua to, to, to get the victory. He, Joshua went in there, got the victory, and he dies, and they do worse. That's the book of Judges. And it's going to get worse. It's going to get good. It's going to get worse. It's going to get good. It's going to get worse. And, and, window was and Moses tells him that, too. And, yeah, it's all over the book. It's all over. He warns him and warns him and warns him. Like God's warning the church, and the church won't listen today. 